and welcome once again to another Marty's Matchbox Makeovers episode coming to you from Australia. Today I shall be making over this Matchbox number 2C. It's a Muir Hill Dumper and it came out one year before I was born in 1961. Now the first ones that came out, the colours were swapped. So the cabin was green and the tipper body was red. And a very small number of the early ones came out with a different decal. The one I have has a Lang decal. The rarest ones come out with a Muir Hill decal and they can be worth over $100 if you've got one. Uh, there's not too many around, however. So just having a, a closer look at it now to see what needs to be done and look at some of the details in this model. Now as this model is over 50 years old and it's got a tipper body, I would imagine the roof would be scuffed up and damaged, but it's not. Uh, quite cleverly, the Matchbox engineers have probably thought ahead to prevent that from happening. And it's got some little supports underneath the green tipper body that land on a part of the chassis and create a very small like, half mil gap on the roof there. So the roof is in pristine condition. The rest of it's pretty ordinary, as you can see. It's going to be, have to be stripped and painted, of course, and new stickers are going to have to be sourced or made. The tires are in good condition. Um, the axles are going to be a bit of a problem because to get those off, I usually use this uh, Dremel tool, which is like a barrel grinder, and I take off the flattened sort of flange end of the mushroom head so I can push the axle through, but with these wheels, you can see they're recessed in the middle. And there's no way known I could uh, get the tool in there without damaging the tire. So I won't be doing that. Instead, I've got to be pretty brutal, and sometimes you have to be to get to where you want to be. And I'm gonna use these side cutters. And once again, cut the axles. I don't like doing it because the model is not genuine at the end of it. You know, it's got new parts, like it's not the original parts, but uh, today I've got no option. If I want to paint this and make it look good, I'll have to cut these axles off. <laughs> Gotta love that sound. <laughs> so these little bits here aren't worth keeping unless I go into micro machines. A restoration which I don't intend to do so I chuck those in the bin and I've got a little plastic bowl there I put all the parts in so they don't go missing now the wheels are off there's a third pin here holding it's the pivot point for the tipper tray it's a short one and I'm using these ordinary pliers just to try and wear away at the end just enough so I can force it through the hole and reuse it. It's a bit tricky and not 100% effective, but sometimes it works. I have to use a fair bit of pressure here to force this through the hole of the chassis. And I use some rotation at the same time to try and work its way through and it works that's one done now I've got to get it out here I'm hoping just to reuse this pin by forcing it back in I forced it out I should be able to force it back in and because it's a display model and won't be subject to much play it will hold together quite well that's the theory now to paint strip, normally I use this poly stripper, but somebody emailed me, they were quite passionate about it. The last video I did, the paint stripper didn't work and they said, use some thinners, some auto grade thinners. Well, this is the nearest thing I could get. It says it's all purpose thinners. So hopefully it'll work. The person that emailed me, they said, leave it for half an hour. Well, I'm gonna leave this for an hour and see what it can do it could be a new technique that i might adopt now i'm using this airbrush cleaning pot to do this experiment in because it's got filters on the roof <laughs> it's got filters on the lid and uh, the fumes should be contained within because this is quite i, I mean i've smelt thinners before 
Sometimes these are really, really powerful, and I think this one is. As soon as I crack the lid, I can instantly smell it. It's got all these child safety devices on it, and, and so it should, because this is pretty evil stuff. It smells like death. Look at that. <laughs> one second it's open, I spill some on my hand. Anyway, this is the non-pourable design of a jar. Like, absolutely hopeless. You tip it out, it hits the lip of the, the can, it just spills everywhere. Instantly the room is filled with fumes. And uh, I'm not happy with that. <laughs> I'll try again. It's just a mess. How are you supposed to tip this out? It should come with a screw on spout or something. So now I've just messed up everything. I've got thinners everywhere. I'm already feeling woozy. My head is spinning. My heart's palpitating. I'm getting a headache, but uh, all for a piece of experimentation to see if it works. It's uh, very, very hot today. Look at that, outdoor 39, indoor 34, and these fumes are just racing off the table into the air. Luckily, I've got this pot that's supposed to be uh, sealed. <laughs> I tip it over, it spills some more out. It's just, nothing's going right at the moment. And I'm finding it difficult to breathe in here. Right, now I'm able to breathe easy. I'm just going to check out the results and see what the thinners have actually achieved. I don't know what came over me, but I, I, I felt pretty woozy around this time and uh, I had to have a bit of a nap. So where was I? Well, first impressions are that uh, it has had some effect. But I also noticed this, this pot that's meant to hold and contain the fumes and, and that when you're cleaning your paintbrush, even the, the rubber seal has been ruined by these thinners. So there's, there's some pretty powerful stuff. Anyway, disappointing results. I expected to look in here and see all the paint floating around in the thinners and uh, as it happens it didn't work particularly well and the only way I could get this paint off at the moment is to run a toothpick tip over 100% of it, its surface which would take forever. The green paint was a little bit affected by the thinners. Not as much as the normal paint strippers though. So still a rather tedious job to get it clean. You can see it's, it's a bit of effort to get this off. And I get a little bit bored. Anyway, I look at the can, and it actually says avoid breathing the vapor, and it's got 65% hydrocarbons. So if I can find one with more than 65%, maybe that's the key. But uh, I don't intend to use this method anytime soon. The fumes just made it impossible to work in the room. So Once again, I would not recommend trying this at home unless you've got the correct breathing apparatus and plenty of ventilation. As you can see, even agitating it with a toothbrush doesn't seem to have any effect. The paint is still clinging on for dear life. So yeah, a little bit disappointing. Good experiment nonetheless. It does show that thinners do do something, but maybe the, some of these older models 
the paint is a little bit more stubborn or resistant to stripping using thinners I don't know exactly the makeup of the paint that they use but look at the roof there that hasn't done a thing really so I'm gonna go back to a quick bathe of my standard paint stripper formula and get this thing moving forward so I can undercoat it and paint it and display it in my cupboard. Remember, my goal is to have one of the original 1 to 75 uh, series models in the Matchbox range. And this is one that I haven't got and that's why I'm doing it. Even though, as I said, it doesn't really do much for me. It's a very boring little model. So I'm in the spray booth now and I'm just giving it a coat of the Tamiya Fine Primer. Now I'm not too sure what's going on here. The light seems to be a little bit bluer than normal. Could be the orange lamp. I've got a downlight above my spray booth there that shines through a hole. Maybe I need to get a different type of downlight there to get rid of that blue effect. So this paint's going on really good and you know what I love about this, I've said it before I'll say it again, after you've sprayed these models with the grey undercoat, you can suddenly see details that you never really noticed before. But check this out, look at those crisp casting lines on that uh, tipper body. There you can see it says number two on the bottom. Lovely, lovely little model really. Uh, I'm starting to warm to it looking at these details. Look at that on the left hand side of the cabin there. It's like a radiator grill or something to suck some air in to cool the engine I'm guessing. And there's some handles on it. So you can obviously remove it to perform some servicing on the engine. This grill on the front very unusual, never seen anything like it on any other matchboxes I've done. Actually looks like it would hinge forward at the bottom there. There's a number plate, headlights, rivets on the bumper bar, maybe a towing point there, and a Muir Hill logo badge on the front, which I never noticed before. It's just great. The detail's amazing. Look at that row of rivets at the front there, right down the centre. So cool, really, that they've... Uh, mastered this technique to get that much detail in these little, tiny little models. I mean, look at the size of my thumb. This is a suicide door as well, I didn't notice. Opens backwards. I call them suicide doors, in fact, a lot of people do. You know, in a taxi, if you... Normal doors held shut by the wind flow around the vehicle. But this one, if you open it up and you're doing 50 Ks down the, down the highway, it'll fly open and yank you outside. That's why they're called suicide doors. This model's made of two parts too. The, the rails on the bottom uh, and the, the cabin are separate and they're held together with that rivet, but I don't have to separate them to do this makeover, which is good. So here's the colors I've picked today. The 467 Mr. Hobby, red, Carmine, red. And the number 26 Mr. Hobby, the bright green. Uh, I was tempted to swap the colours around, but I thought, no, nah, I'll keep it original. Maybe if I get another one, I'll do it in the other colour scheme. I mix my own paints. I used to be so precise with this. Now I just slot the stuff together. It generally works more than it doesn't. There's the original paintbrush I bought maybe four years ago. It's still going strong, and I don't know what brand it is because there's no numbers or markings on it at all. Some people have emailed me and said, what, what brand is that? I've got no idea. All I know is it's a dual action, which means that you can adjust the paint flow and the air flow by maneuvering the finger control in various directions. That's a great job, look at that. Beautiful red gloss paint.
Okay, so we're nearly finished. Uh, I've just got to wait for the paint to dry and then I'm going to put it back together again. Uh, what I do, generally I'll put them in the oven. I have a bit of time up my sleeve, so I thought I'd leave these to air dry. And uh, in the past, I got into the habit of smelling the paint. Like that red smells dry, so that's probably good enough to handle and not leave any fingerprints. Uh, this one here is still a little bit fumey. I wish you could smell it, smell a vision, but you can't. But it's definitely still um, curing this paint because you can smell the fumes coming up. So I'm going to leave these overnight and uh, I shall come back tomorrow to finish this model. Next day, straight into it, under the wheels. Just thought I'd give them a spruce up, give them a clean, wash them in some soapy water. Thought I'd try this, bit of furniture polish. It says it's good for plastic. I don't know why I'm bothering, really, because this is going in my cupboard and no one will ever look at it again. But I do like them looking as good as I can possibly get, because they're only going to get worse over time. So this is something I haven't really done before. I think I've used armor all once before. Sometimes I've, I've sprayed them with some gloss varnish. See what it come up like. Not a vast difference. Just takes the scuffing, sort of takes the edge off the scuff marks on it. Now, not much to go really, just got to put this thing back together. These axles I cleaned up with some very fine emery paper. So to put this back together I bought these nail punches with a concave end on them. This is what they look like when you buy them. I cut that rubber off and shortened it by cutting it with an angle grinder. Now this one fits in my hammer drill, the Makita hammer drill here. Now, the hammer drill effect is important. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to reform the end of the axle into a mushroom so the wheels don't fall off. There's a close up of the tip. If you're going to do this at home, this is the sort of nail punch that you need to buy. It's got that concave end on it. This model I am very nervous of chipping the paint, I must admit, but I have to put the, I can put the front wheels on, no worries, but the back wheels have to wait until I've put the tipper tray back on first. And uh, using the drill and the vise and all that, I'm always worried about chipping it at this stage because I'm very, very happy with the paint finish on this model at the moment. Try and make the metal soft, somebody suggested to me a long time ago. I don't know whether it works, I can't vouch for it, but I do it anyway. I use my little butane torch and heat the end up till it's like white hot almost. And apparently it makes the metal malleable and easier to form. So must remember to set the drill to the hammer setting. Now I put the good end of the axle in the bottom nail punch and the end I'm trying to do is sitting up now I do apologize shocking angle I was concentrating so hard on getting this right without chipping it. I uh, probably did the worst video shot of my career looking at the base of the battery of the drill there Anyway, you get the idea. Here's the finished result, and there's no tricks involved. It actually worked. So here's a close-up of the end that I've just formed, and uh, it, although it's not exactly original, it does the job, and it looks quite sweet. The front wheels are done, now the tip of body, which is easy because I've just got to force that pin back through. Remember I pulled it out, there's a lot of force involved pulling it out. There's a bit of force involved pushing it back in again. So it's not going to fall out on its own accord, that's for sure. So 
So I've got my thumbnail there to stop the pliers from striking the model and if it was to suddenly jump through that could cause a chip but as it was it didn't happen. So nearly there, just one final push, here we go. Everything's, uh, oh there's a very small chip there on the red paint, I need to touch up with a paintbrush, I'll do that later. You won't even know. So now to make the decals, I found a blurred image online on an auction site where they were selling one of these. So I copied the picture and scavenged it and now using Photoshop, I'm just duplicating the decal as best as I can and I'm happy with that. So what I've done is I've printed a whole lot off at the correct size. Now I measured the size, I guesstimated it from the original model using these digital calipers. There wasn't much of a decal there to measure so I measured the span of the door imagining that the decal went the entire width of the door there. I mean, I've got photos off the internet to assist me with this. Now I use my brother printer just to do a rough one on some, a rough printout and it, just to do a, a sample printout on some plain paper just to see if I got the dimensions right. God, it looks so weird at this magnification doesn't it? I struggle with my fat fingers to get it in position. I think that's going to be great. So I'm going to print it out now on this inkjet white backed paper. I've got some clear transfer paper and I've got some white backed transfer paper. Well I'm using white backed transfer paper because I did try some clear and as you will see in a minute, the yellow was not visible when it was on the model. So I had to use the white backed transfer paper. Now, before you can attempt to use these decals, you have to let the ink dry first and then you have to coat it with some uh, clear top coat varnish to seal the ink to the paper so it doesn't bleed when you dip them in water to use them. So I just use the Tamiya gloss varnish. What is it? Uh, there you go, TS13 clear. So I give it a couple of coats, a little sweep once, twice, three times, four times maybe, and I'll leave it to dry. I wasted a bit of paper here. What I should have done, and ordinarily I do, I just forgot because I dropped the ball. I use my little guillotine to cut a strip off of the, including the decals, to cut one strip off, and then I spray it. But what I've done here is I've oversprayed some of the decal paper, and it's not cheap, so I've, I've sort of wasted a bit there. So normally I should have done that first and then sprayed it with the varnish. So if you are making over one of these models and you want these decals to use on your model, just send me an email and I'll post some out to you, include your address obviously, and I'll send you some out to use because I've got a few. I found these little plastic Ziploc bags at the old house in Kevin's room. They come in really handy for uh, putting these decals in and I've got quite a set done quite a few models now and I've collected quite a few decals and I keep them in these plastic containers under the bench here talking about Kevin by the way well when we moved like a year ago um, we brought him with us but he kind of vanished he went off into the bush when we were unloading the truck and we haven't seen him since so I hope he's doing all right. 
I guess he's just got excited and now we're in the country he wanted to go back to na back to nature or something so I wish him luck I hope he's still still out there so I've got these boxes here that I keep my decals in and um, I'm just gonna put the new ones in here but having a look to bring back memories of some of the older models that I've done just have a check out of these decals I've got here they're for the milk milk truck these are for what SO petrol tanker or something no the bus I think so there's a few there if you see any that you want give me a give me an email and I'll send you some no worries at all I have now added to my collection I'll put them back it's always good back to the job at hand just some lukewarm water in this saucer with one drop of detergent. Don't know why, somebody said add some detergent. I think it breaks the surface tension of the water and makes it easier to pick up. So to begin with, I, I used the clear backed decal here that I printed. I was very proud of this, the quality of this sticker until I put it on the vehicle. And I realized that the yellow is not visible. So it doesn't really look anything like the original. So took it off and I got the white backed ones and tried again. The only problem with the white backed decals is it's very very difficult to cut them cleanly to the edge without leaving a white border. Uh, as you can see there's a very very thin white line underneath the, the decal there you don't really notice it on the model, but you can see it here with this camera view. So they're not perfect, but they are certainly good enough to make it look like the real McCoy when it's on display. So overall, I'm very pleased with that very simple label. It took me an hour or more to produce and put it on the model, but well worth it. So as usual, here is a reminder of what this little vehicle looked like before I started. Obviously been well loved and played with by its previous owners. And this is what it looks like now. I even put a little dab of chrome ink on the end of the axles just to trick them up a little bit. I resisted the urge to paint the hinges and the door handle and the lights and the grill, as some people may do. I just like to try and keep them all original looking and hopefully one day in, the, in a few years time, who knows, I'll have one of every one. That was my goal and I shall be pursuing it relentlessly as long as I am breathing. And hopefully I shall be continuing to entertain you by showing my results on YouTube. So thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Please leave a comment if you feel the need, and I will see you next time on Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. So goodbye. Oh, shit. just spilled some. <laughs> Holy crap. I'm not using this shit anymore. Oh man.